All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is about time to head to the Kakari Wilds and see what's up with all this uh, superstitious nonsense about cannibals and witches and who knows what else that we have out here. And uh, we also need to grab some treaties for the Wardens to remind everybody about their obligations to us to help with the Blight. First things first, we get, need to get by Mr. Cop over here who wouldn't let me out earlier. Hey, I'm told you all have business in the wilds. The gate's open for you. Just be careful out there. Even a Grey Warden won't be safe in the forest tonight. Don't worry about it. We got this. All right. This is uh, um, not really a complicated map if you look at the map, but then when you go to wandering around, it's really easy to get turned around and lost and sent back to the start. And uh, Yeah, anyway. So you will see me refer to the map quite a bit here. Um, essentially, the areas you haven't explored yet will be darkened out, and what you have explored will, will show up, and so you can uh, kind of see uh, where you still need to go. And it's a good idea to cover every corner of this entire area, because there are little uh, side quests to be found basically everywhere. Most of them having to do with this missionary, and we are going to find his body here shortly. And he will have left a letter, and that will send us on a series of little side quests. Kind of following out his story and what's up with him and apparently uh, something happened to do with his son and even his uh, his wife and anyway we'll see, we'll see. apparently the dead have attracted a pack of wolves here sorry guys i wouldn't have killed all of you if you hadn't attacked me first honestly I left you guys alone I do have some some small memory of this place. I, I do remember what I'm looking for. I know what quests uh, I should be able to find out here. Completing them, even when the XP doesn't pop up, you're still getting it. So they're definitely worth doing. Alright, let's see. Over here. Who's this? Who is that Grey Wardens? Well, he's not half as dead as he looks, is he? My scouting band was attacked by Darkspawn. They came out of the ground. Please help me. I've got to return to camp. If you just bandage me up, I can get back myself. I have bandages in my pack. Thank you. Oh, I, I've got to get out of here. All right. Did our good deed for the day there. Poor guy. Did you hear? An entire patrol of seasoned men killed by Darkspawn. Calm down, Sir Jory. We'll be fine if we're careful. Those soldiers were careful, and they were still overwhelmed. How many Darkspawn can the four of us slay? A dozen? A hundred? There's an entire army in these forests. There are dark spawn about, but we're in no danger of walking into the bulk of the horde. How do you know? I'm not a coward, but this is foolish and reckless. We should go back. Well, don't wet your greaves, man. They might rust. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> Sound like a coward to me. I am simply trying to stay alive. You do not see me fleeing, do you? A bit of fear isn't unnatural, you know. Few relish meeting Darkspawn up close. I know I don't. It appears that I am the only man here. <laughs> that is awesome. I know I'm relying on you to protect me. <laughs> know this. All Grey Wardens can sense Darkspawn. Whatever their cunning, I guarantee they won't take us by surprise. That's why I'm here. You see, Sir Knight... We might die, but we'll be warned about it Oh, there you first. go, then. That is reassuring. So we're good, then, right? That doesn't mean I'm here to make this easy, however. So let's get a move on. No, you're not. Your tanking abilities are uh, seriously questionable. And that brings up something. Um, combat tactics in this. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, uh, simply because none of my followers here really have any, any combat slots yet. They've only got a couple. 
Okay, so there's not a whole lot I can do anyway. Um, you know, hit this, um, don't hit that, and that's about it. But uh, later on, when I have a lot of combat slots, and I have followers who are going to be with me for the rest of the game, then um, I, will, I will sink a lot of time into uh, managing all that. But uh, combat tactics, and then... In and of themselves, ba the basic rule of thumb is get your tank to draw the attention away from your damage dealers, all right? Because the ones who do the most damage also tend to be the most squishy. In other words, easiest to kill, all right? So what I want to do is I want my tank to be uh, as healthy and hardy as possible and to draw the attention long enough to where my mage can basically keep my tank alive and do some damage on their own, and my rogue can run around and uh, backstab and do what my rogue does. Now, I'm not going to have really anything invested in uh, health and um, strength. It's, it's all going to be dexterity. It's all going to be um, dealing damage, hitting as often as possible, and get, get hitting less, uh, get hitting as least as possible, blah, 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 getting tongue tied here. But uh, that's that's pretty much the uh, the strategy, the tactics I have for my rogue. And I can get in here and afford to uh, throw in a hit or two now, but there will be a point where enemies, um, I'm not going to want them to have their attention on me whatsoever. I'm going to want my tank to go in, draw their attention, and be able to take enough damage to where I can get in behind and finish the enemy off. That's, that's the general rule of thumb. Right? That's the tactics. That's kind of how they design this. Um to operate and if you can kind of keep that in mind and tweak all of your follower tactics and your own personal strategies around that I think you'll find a lot of success even on the higher difficulties without having to invest so much um, I think the the biggest mistake that can be made by a player in, in Dragon Age and this is in, in both the games so far and, and I assume it's going to be true for Inquisition also is to try to make a jack of all trades well, I want to be a tank, healer, assassin, mage, warrior, paladin, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, one character's not going to do any of that effectively if you try to do all of that. You can do, you can shine in one of those areas, but if you try to do everything, if you try to be able to tank and be a super damage dealer and be a healer and be this, and it, 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 it's not designed to work like that. Um, true enough, Dragon Age 2, the, uh, the two-handed warrior... You could be somewhat of an off-tank. You could deal uh, an extensive amount of damage and be able to take damage also. That, that was kind of an exception. But, uh, you know, your your healers and your other damage dealers still played their role. They really did. You know, um, you even had mages whose, whose entire existence was dedicated to DPS. You know, they weren't healing the party. Um, they weren't really even buffing the party. They were just doing... Um, massive damage, similar to like a rogue. But then you had other healers, which as damage dealers, um, they were more effective as as basically batteries for the party. What I mean is batteries, it's like your wired were wires were connected to them and they would buff you, um, supply you with uh, uh, speed and extra skill and extra offense and attack and defense and all that kind of stuff. But as far as being direct damage dealers themselves, not so much. Now, there were times where maybe they could, you know, throw a, a spell spell your way you know that would uh that would help kill off some enemies but for the most part they were there to buff the party they were there to essentially make everyone else work better and if you take them out of the picture your party was a whole lot less effective so i mean they they, they serve their purpose all right but trying to have them deal damage and buff the party and heal and all that you exhaust their resources so quickly that they would either be out of the fight really really early or they wouldn't do anything well enough um, to justify their existence. So, essentially what you want to do is you want to um, be an expert in one particular area with each character and have each one of those roles make up the whole. In, in other words, instead of leveling your character to be a jack-of-all-trades, level your party to be a jack-of-all-trades where you can succeed in any given situation. Right? And keep in mind that some of your characters um, might just be pretty pretty ineffective in a certain area. Like their specialty may be the very thing that the enemy is completely immune to. Well then don't take them with you. Leave them back at the camp and take another party member with you that will be effective against that particular enemy or that particular area. All right. And when you get in, the higher the difficulties really kind of, essentially all they really do is test your knowledge of party mechanics. That's really what the higher difficulties, once you get into Nightmare, you need to understand how, how party mechanics work. Now, then, on the other hand, you have these guys who go in for a uh, 
a solo run and they'll take a rogue or they'll take a major they'll take whatever and they'll solo and essentially they try to play the whole role and you say well if you can't be a jack of all trades what do you do well essentially you you create a strength with that character that's so overwhelming that it makes up for the deficits in other words like if you had a rogue um if you want to maximize your dps you would go with cunning but you would rely on party members to buff you to raise your attack rating, all right? Because with cunning, you get no uh, bonus to your attack, which essentially means you may do a crap ton of damage, but you're gonna miss a lot, all right? And I don't care if you do a thousand damage per hit, if you're not hitting anything, it's irrelevant. And so you would have your party members like Leliana buff you with, uh, you know, her song of courage or something, all right? To make it to where you can attack, uh, you can hit more often, all right? Now, if you were running solo, then that wouldn't be a factor. What do you do? Well, you you run with a really, really high dexterity rogue that um, almost never gets hit, all right? And that hits really, really often, and then you um, learn how to kite your enemies and draw your enemies out one at a time and deal with them head on. And then when you get really tough enemies, like, I don't know, high dragons and stuff, then you have to come up with some way because you're eventually going to get hit and you don't want to get one hit, so you, you deal with that when the situation comes up and you figure out a way that you can... Uh, use salves and and deal with your armor and and get your you know defense up and uh buffs and debuffs and all this other kind of stuff okay and like i say you figure that out when you get there but um overall you basically create a character that's so overwhelming in say attack and defense that you don't need a whole lot of health and uh you don't need um, your other party buffs, and you make up for that if you can. And where you can't make up for it, you just overwhelm it with something else. And you be and still, it's, this, it's the same rule of thumb. You become an expert in one particular area. And so just keep that in mind in, uh, in tactics. If you have a hard time in combat in Dragon Age, um, it's probably due to... This would be my first guess for anybody, because uh, I'm guilty of it too, um, early on until I learned that being a jack-of-all-trades just doesn't work. Um... It's not effective overall. The most brutal party mechanics that you can put together where you just, regardless of the difficulty, you just run over everything you face or where everybody is doing their particular job and they're doing it exceptionally well. Your healer really has no health and has no armor. Your healer is back there and you set it up to where your, your tank is drawing all the aggro so your healer never gets any attention. Because healing spells will actually draw the aggro of enemies. So you set up your party mechanics where your tank overrides that. And your tank is just so annoying and so aggravating that the enemies can't resist your tank, right? And so your healer can sit back there and keep your tank alive, all right? Once you have all the enemies focused on your tank and they can't kill your tank and that's just pissing them off, right? Then you come in with either your two rogues or your other mage and your, and your rogue or your other two mage or however you set up your party to come in and just obliterate the entire battlefield. Hopefully not killing off your tank in the process because on, also on nightmare difficulties, um, you have friendly fire to take into account. So um, some spells will um, kill your allies as quickly, if not even faster than the enemies, right? So factoring that in, then you will learn what spells work with what. And once you have all that down, you set up a party that each um, element complements the other so well that uh, you become one solid whole. And there you have your jack of all trades. There you have your I can face anything and kick its ass before they even have a chance to uh, uh, breathe twice. Mm, that's what you want. All right? And it's possible, but it takes some experimentation. And that in and of itself, uh, to me, makes this game rewarding, is figuring out different combinations of party members that work. And uh, that's, that's it's amazing. I don't know. I just love their combat system. But uh, not understanding how it works can lead to a lot of frustration. It can lead to someone throwing their hands up in the air and say, I just don't get it. And that, that, that's, that's understandable, you know. Uh, if, 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 if you don't get it, then yeah, it can be, uh, it can be really discouraging. But uh, once you do understand it, then it, understand it, then it opens up an entire world of possibilities on uh, mixing up your party and, and party mechanics. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's really rewarding. Anyway, I'm going to look here um, between um, the letter to Jogby, apparently that's Rigby's son, and this last will and testament, it will lead us to several other, other areas in the map um, to kind of continue his little personal story here and open up some other little side quests and eventually lead us to where we even have an inheritance to send to his uh, wife. But that's in a, an entirely uh, different area later on in the game. All right, so we'll get back to it in the next one and carry on and... Uh, 
uh, explore more of the Quarkari Wilds. Thanks for watching. If you want to catch the rest of this Let's Play up to this point, hit the top box. For all my videos, hit the bottom box. And if you want to subscribe and support the Ninja Flips, mash on that button right there over my head. All right, catch y'all later. Bye-bye.